Well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being here, wherever you are, and whether it's evening or morning or afternoon. <laughs> My name is Andres Hake, and I'm the director of the Advanced Architectural Design Program at Columbia GSAP, and and I'm also the dean of the school. So for those course in the 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 AD uh, program is actually great because you have a very good direct access to to everything that happens in the school. Uh, I want to introduce also Xiaoxi uh, Chen, that is uh, the assistant director of the AED program and the uh, 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 fundamental uh, 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 member of our community at Columbia GSAP. Xiaoxi, maybe you want to. Hi, everyone. Um, nice to meet you. And um, I'm looking forward to meeting some of you. I've, and I've probably corresponded with some of you via email. And if you guys have any questions after, you know, today or after the fact, um, I'll be very happy to answer them um, in the coming days, so. Okay, uh, so this could be uh, a conversation. Uh, so please jump in whenever you want or raise your hands, uh, either physically or, or electronically. Uh, and also say, see, please, uh, 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 just jump in whenever you, you want. But we're very happy about this, this program. This is a program that is, uh, it's helped many people that have already a professional background and have an experience and already have a training in architecture, not to learn the basics of architecture, but actually to, to go deeper in what is that that they want to contribute to and to become uh, professionals or academics or scholars or uh, you know, uh, uh, all, all of the above uh, simultaneously, normally, that's normally the case, but in a way that you have the capacity to develop your own voice and to change the way we do architecture and we think about architecture. So it's not about what is the way that we, that architecture is being thought of in the, in the past, but actually what is the potential that we have to use it to produce change? And by doing that, also positioning ourselves as sort of leaders in the evolution of, of our fields. And this is something that we do from Columbia historically. We've done this successfully from the AD program. It's a program that has nurtured the emergency of digital practices in architecture. It's a program that has anticipated the notion of uh, 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 contextual, kind of contextual moderni modernity with kind of fronton. It's a program that has helped also uh, introduce the metropolitan culture to architecture, and now it's deeply connected to what is happening in the world, from climate to societal divides to 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 the, the uh, geopolitical tensions that are shaping the times we're living, to the technolo technological defiance, and not only the potential of it, but also the frames of power where technology is happening, and that's our notion of advancement. We we claim this is about advanced architecture because it's the advancement of architecture. You're, uh, we're preparing uh, talent people, talented people from around the world, many people from New York, many people from the US, many people from many other places in the world uh, to, to lead uh, the, the change and the evolution and the next steps, the future of architecture. And we do it from Avery. Many of you were here a few days ago uh, and Avery, it's this building which actually is very well known in the world of architecture because of its library that it's called the Avery Library that is for most people is considered the most important uh, library in architecture and built environment in the world. And actually it's the architect, the, the library of reference uh, uh, for architectural publications. We believe that practice pedagogy and research are intrinsically interconnected. And that's what we do all the time. Basically what we teach, what we practice is uh, fueled by research and innovation. And that's what makes AED so helpful uh, to understand how architecture is part of the most pressing issues that are happening now in the world. And we do that through design, through uh, writing, through research, through activism, through uh, uh, mediation to many, many different things, to community engagement, to scientific mobilization, to uh, many, many forms of technological development, to policy, uh, but all of that coordinated to design. And we believe that there's eight principles that are very important. The first is the environmental engagement. 
this is something that is unavoidable now and it goes from uh, climate to ecology and that's basically the, the paradigm in which we live. The second is that we definitely want to mobilize technology and we want to interrogate technology and what's the potential of contemporary technologies, but we also want technology to be held accountable. Uh, we want to see what are the different technological scenarios that uh, we're, we're basically the, uh, uh, exposed to and can mobilize. And we can also think that there's uh, different uses and different technology, different technological uses and different technologies that can be mobilized. We love uh, very advanced technology and we interrogate it and how it operates and what is the systems of power it caters to, uh, what is possible to them. But at the same time, we also have a very uh, an eye for the technopunk or steampunk uh, culture or, and recycling cultures and surf culture and all of those are cultures that are relating to specifically they're, they're developing in a specific ways to techno or, or relating a specific in the, to a specific ways to technology. And we really want to acknowledge all that ecosystem. We also uh, believe that the great capacity of architecture is uh, to rearticulate the social. And this is very important. Uh, we don't think architecture is just a neutral container, like a box where you put societies. But actually, architecture articulates what we uh, can understand for, for the social. So the social is composed both by uh, humans and non-human entities. And it's that alliance that we uh, can sustain in the long run of time or in the short time of interaction, uh, what we could call architecture, actually. And that means that um, that when we look at buildings and when we do buildings and design buildings and beyond buildings, many other things, infrastructures, practices, uh, um, uh, cultures, basically, we understand that that is what the social is uh, in conjunction with the human and non-human forms of life. And But we also are specifically interested in the times uh, that are shaped by by climate uh, 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 emergencies and and ecological the drop of ecological biodiversity on a different culture of material and it's a culture of cyclabilities. We don't look at materials as something that we buy from a catalog and we just put in a building, you know. But rather, we look at the whole the entire cycle. Where is its source? What is the mining that is related to it? What are the communities that are affected by its production and distribution and uh, recycling? What is the second life of materials? How do we intervene those different processes so that basically the action of architecture, it's empowered to be relevant in the entire cycle. And that's a different, totally different culture, material culture that we do from the lab. We have the natural material lab that many of you saw the other day that is working with the molecules of proteins and animal and vegetable proteins, like the, the, the like fish proteins that are uh, released in the water and that, that are in the natural material lab are, are collected and used as a, as a glue to, to, to mix with natural fibers and mud to produce materials that can be 3D printed or to the assemblage and disassemblage or the, the logistics of the materiality or the, you know, like the, what it means to reuse to all those from very high tech to very low tech cultures of the material uh, cycling that are fundamental to operating contemporary processes. We, we go beyond the notion, the modern notion of anthropocentrism. No longer we can sustain an idea that the human is at the center and the rest of the species are sacrificable. Uh, we, we understand that the world in which, in which uh, we're living basically requires us to develop interspecies relationships and relationships that are long-term sustained. If we are building with wood, we want to make sure that we have a good alliance with the forest and the life in the forest and the communities that are part of the forest. So for us, where the notion of community is much more complex than what it was in the 1960s in the first experiences of participation and, and enrollment, uh, we think that our communities are complex community, communities that are ecologically constituted. For instance, if we relate to, to the mud, we want to know what are the communities around the mud, what is the uh, people that are living through that uh, earthic uh, realities, what are their practices, what, but also 
What are the bacteria that are there that are fundamental for the well-being? What are the that they use to cook? What are the that overall compound of communities being uh, multi-species and our uh, action to be distributing benefit, uh, not only to humans and not only to powerful humans, but to the entire ecosystem, is a total change of paradigm that are shaping the times that we, we live and that uh, we deeply engage with. We also, of course, how could we know uh, understand that the realities that we're living are constituted in the assemblage of online and offline urbanities. And that is something that we have naturalized, but often in most schools of architecture, we only design the, the offline uh, realm as autonomous. For us, there's no way we could do that uh, relevantly, unless we really understand that the material world is also uh, mobilized and, and infiltrated and infiltrating uh, online realities that also have a material dimension with their farm, with the servers, with the with the data data centers, with the data farms, with infrastructure it is part of, but with the realities also how it affects bodies or landscapes or ecosystems. Uh, that's basically what what design needs to or where that's where design operates now. And we have very ex people that are incredibly expert on these topics. And we have studios that you can take that are specifically addressing this um, uh, multimedia or multimedia urbanism. And, uh, and we have we, we also make pay close attention to, to all the developments that have been done uh, in the last decades on identity issues. And this is this goes from uh, from feminism and parenthood and, and care and childcare to aging population and healthy aging and, and to racialization and all the colonization and all the detentions and these uh, and segregations and, and inequalities resulting from that. And what is the way that architecture both participates on them and can also be a force of confront, confronting this uh, dividing uh, 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 dynamics uh, to queer uh, uh, studies and the, and what it means not only in terms of LGBTQ activism that of course is shaped cities around the world, but also what it means from a post-human uh, perspective, a human a form of human that is constructed as trans theory help us to understand that of course it's the connection also with ecology and technology. And that, that field of, uh, let's say, inquire, design, operation, uh, is very much shaping a big part also of what we do. Uh, and finally, I think that geopolitics, and we're living a moment where this is incredibly present in, the, in what is happening now, of course, in the Middle East, but also what is happening in the, in the US border with Mexico, but also what happens in Ukraine. And we see that, for instance, gas, the use of gas is a fundamental which is so architectural, like how we use gas, how we distribute it, it's very much an architectural uh, uh, endeavor and responsibility. And that is shaping the tensions in Europe, the war in Europe and the redistribution of borders. And, and that is something that we have people that are really experts on like Marco Ferrari and Liz Chuk and others. And we, we deeply engage with that and, and make the best of that. Uh, eventually what makes the AD program unique in the world is that we look at something like this New York that is our laboratory, is where we operate, uh, and we understand that is a side of embedded criticality. Criticality both in the sense that it's incredibly relevant what is happening here, but also that is loaded with discourse, with activism, with confrontations, with different models of the future that are disputing. And the work of design has the huge capacity to make the best of this criticality, to mobilize it as a, as a force for change in both societies and ecosystems. This is very unique, uh, the way we do it. And of course, we do it through a very, very calculated and I would say tailored um, uh, curriculum, but also curriculum that is totally intended for you to use it, for you to inhabit it and navigate it. This is not, uh, let's say, a template for, uh, for instruction. Each graduate from the AD program is totally different 
totally different, but part of a community of people that discuss together, that share references, that, that share the same ambition of being relevant. And I think what is really good is that is that, that, that you have a huge flexibility to define your track within the program. At the same time, the program is helping you to define and to find what is that that you want to do. The first semester is the summer and it's a, it's kind of an injection of complexity. Uh, it's very intense. Get ready for it. Uh, but it's fun and not you don't suffer. Basically, that's that would be my my summary. Like it's it's really intense. It's a change. Like in, in less than three months, you totally change uh, your way of thinking, your way of doing. Your capacities are multiplied. I would say, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, I. I I hope you can talk soon with our, with our students because it's basically for 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 a period of time of uh, 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 yeah a little two months and a half basically you are reading every week uh, at least two or three uh, crucial pieces of architectural thinking and imagination and criticality you're writing all the time you're writing pieces but very short you know you're writing like five hundred word things that are then reviewed with your instructor you have advisors that are helping you through your readings, through your writing. Uh, you're designing, you're developing a project in a super ambitious environment. Uh, and, and you have time to discuss as a group uh, in moderated sessions. Uh, you have lectures all the time. You have, so it's it's super intense moment of immersion in all the complexity that I was describing uh, before. So by the end of this, you are really well aware what is the horizon, what is the leading edge of architectural evolution and in relationship with urban practices, with the spatial practices, with buildings. Uh, and you become experts on what is the contemporary leading edge of all these discussions. Uh, and that's incredibly, uh, I, I would say it's incredibly effective. And, um, and then we help you find what is your, your, your next steps. And the second semester, I mean, first in the advanced architectural design studios, you will see that you have 10 studios, each of them in one of these lines that I was explaining. And you basically, through the lottery, you, you choose which ones you're taking with, uh, I mean, of course, uh, there's, you, you express your first and second option and third option, and normally people get one of their first options. Uh, and, and then we have transcolarities that I will explain, arguments, uh, and once you go through this, uh, which is amazing, and we also make sure that everyone meet each other, uh, you basically have the second semester, the third semester to navigate the school, which becomes a huge panorama from which you can choose. This is the way it works. Basically, we have, it's very simple, the summer. We have the advanced studios, uh, we have arguments, and we have transcolarities. And all the topics that I explained before are basically crushing the different courses. So you will be able to basically get design on one of these topics. On each of these topics, you will see the work that your peers are developing. In arguments, you will have people that are coming to present their work on these directions, and you will have the opportunity to discuss with them and discuss their work. And it's about interrogating them and how to learn to make questions and interrogate and being in conversation with the most important uh, thinkers and doers in architecture and urban practices now, and transcolarities that I will explain that looks very specifically to how the architectural culture uh, can be expanded by looking at many, many, many cases of architecture of the last decades through all these different perspectives. The advanced design studios are incredibly lively. They look like this. Uh, and they are places, you, each of you have a position, of course, uh, uh, and you have your space, but your, your space is also part of a larger group of your studio. And there's areas where you discuss, it's like an urbanism, I would say, that is permanently active. I mean, you can, uh, we have the maker space, of course, the fabrication center for the school, that is a, the place that you can both come to develop your work, but also come to work actually to get jobs from. Uh, and it's incredibly likely, uh, it's, it's a large ecosystem that actually has two floors. Well, you'll see, it's very, it's kind of, kind of fun. We permanently work with experts, and that's a constant in in the school. Uh, experts from across the university. Uh, we have 
for those that are not familiar with Columbia University, we have the climate school that also has the uh, Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, uh, which is the most important uh, scientific center uh, uh, dedicated to climate uh, and to ecology. And it's right here, you can visit it, you can work with it. We have like uh, institutions that are uh, reshaping the way we, we live and our bodies, why, what's the way our bodies are constituted and what is our, what our both in the school and across the university. So the presence of experts is, is very, very is constant. But it's your work, what is at the center. So uh, the work of students being presented in the school and discussed by large communities of faculty, experts, uh, critics from different researchers from the university and from beyond the university, from the city of New York. So basically we mobilize people to discuss your work so this is an actual presentation you see CLC here, <laughs> and um, and this is produced by a student. That then once you know you have your your time to produce to to develop your projects, uh, uh, in conversation with many, with the support of many, and when you present it, also you have a community of people that is willing to contribute to it to help you take it further to to understand. What is that that your project is challenging and and really people that as you see in this photograph are paying attention to what you say and and do their best to help and some of these people are the most clever people in the world thinking about architecture now so it's it's really a luxury to be in something like that for arguments we basically bring people from all around the world that are the the ones that are doing the most important works on architectural discourse in relationship with design. And we have basically uh, half of them are people that are directly related or identifying as architects, like Keller Easterling, for instance, there, or designers like Forma Fantasma, Dean Simone, uh, or but there's the other half are people that are uh, not uh, coming from architecture, but uh, but doing research and and working and mobilizing architecture. So it's a moment for interdisciplinary. Alliance, and we have people, for instance, like Laura Poitras here, uh, that did an amazing work of research of the uh, the birth of NSA and wiring in the in the AT and T building in New York, or Jack Halberstam, for instance, or Ruha Benjamin, uh, and and this is the way it works. We have the the second pillar uh, course for the summer is the is transcalarities arenas of design, and this is like that. We take Wood Auditorium, the entire class, and each week we design, we design, we studied in detail uh, maybe 15 cases of architecture uh, of the last decades that are specifically addressing different responses, or they are providing different responses to the eight areas of work that I was mentioning before. And this is a, an immense opportunity for you to get familiar to the to the complexity of design and to expand your design culture and your design capacities by looking in detail to the most important cases of architectural design of the last decades. This is incredibly helpful because basically what we do is that each of you is, is studying in detail some of these cases. And by the end of the summer, we have studied more than 300 uh, cases of architecture in detail that does something that immensely uh, uh, expand your, your immediately your critical capacity and your capacity for design. Um, this is something that we do uh, in both in the big classes and in small groups with our instructors. And when it comes to the, and then you have a few days off, but the intensity comes back in the fall and, and then you have the opportunity to, to melt with the entire school with, with the with the with the MR program in their final year. So the, the good thing is that the AD uh, students are people that already have a professional degree like, like you. And basically you would immediately jump into the last year of the MR and will melt in the advanced studios with them. Uh, but you're already prepared because you've already gone through this huge immersion that makes the AD students the most intellectually prepared actually of the of the school, I would say, and that's very exciting uh, because they they go through all this moment. And uh, I mean, of course, there's so much super prepared people all around, but I think the AD students have a very unique voice of what the contemporary uh, tensions are and the capacities for architecture to address them. And you have many courses. You have uh, uh, then you have electives, and the electives are your tool also 
to shape your own trajectory. Take into account that we have so many electives. I don't know exactly the number because it's growing and growing and there's, you have uh, technological electives, representational, computational electives. Uh, we have history and theory electives, but beyond this, you can take courses in other programs. You can take courses in, 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 in the GSA programs across the, the board. And beyond that, you can take courses in the in the school. You can take courses in engineering. You can take courses in the law school. You can take courses. So your electives are your tool to navigate the complexity of Columbia University and GSAP and shape your own trajectory. And this has a great uh, 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 capacity. Of course, there's complexities that you need to navigate to register. And we're happy to support you and help you on that. So it's very important guidance to get guidance that we provide it. Uh, but you can take how many points uh, can be taken without paying additional tuition, C or C? Um, 19. So you are required to take 15 points, but you can take up to 19. My advice, take the 19 points. <laughs> you know, if you don't have the time, you drop a course, you know, but make the, the best of your of your tuition and your courses and your points, uh, because this is really the opportunity to 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 enhance your, your uh, expertise and your capacities and we have an amazing pool of uh, design uh, and faculty, and not only design, uh, history and theory faculty. I mean, we could go on and on with each of these people, but each of them are basically leading a part of our profession and, and our, our uh, uh, discipline. Each of them very different. So it's, it's kind of amazing that we can bring to the same building many, many of the most important voices around the world. And this is the kind of work that is produced. These are actual works that were produced very recently. For instance, this is a use of machine learning to uh, analyze uh, the material stock of a city uh, so that components of the buildings could be reorganized to uh, and re so the entire city could be reconstructed by using the same materials, by mining the materials in the existing buildings so that the overall energy efficiency could be multiplied. This is something that is incredibly, I mean, it's probably the only possible in a place like, like Colombia, like GISA, where we have these computation courses uh, so close to the design studios. Or for instance, it's a project to remove or basically uh, uh, remove the notion of waste uh, within our societies in, in the city of New York by creating these infrastructures that are like vertical parks that are bringing together different species so that the waste for of humans, basically the waste produced by humans becomes the habitat in which other species live and vice versa. So we could close the material cycles by designing the relationship between the relationships between different species uh, so that there's no need to, to mobilize the notion of garbage or trash in the city of New York. Uh, this, is a, this was awarded with the Paris uh, Prize. So, or many, many other projects. These are projects developed in the in Bernard Schumann's studio that are climatic devices that are helping to regulate New Year's climate and mitigate the impact of climate change as floating islands that would be on the east and had some rivers. Um, or this, for instance, is a project developed in Michael Bell's studio that is looking at the capacity of robotics to generate uh, performative environments that would change permanently according to the conditions that are required for, for the people. Or for instance, in a very different tone, this is a, uh, a studio by Ife Wannaval and Amanda Williams, the artist, a collaboration between the two of them that is looking at interiors and what is the use of interior decoration to make a trans political transition of interiors and the way gender is performing them. Or, I mean, we could go on, this is an amazing work by Hara al Khouri that developed this uh, infrastructure uh, to reclaim the land uh, post-war of post-war environments, in, in specifically the one of Iraq, and looking at what is the way that the, the metals, the radiation, that is the toxicity that is produced through war, that as we know is huge, basically can be progressively removed uh, uh, from the sites of, of the post-conflicted sites. Uh, and we uh, we travel. You, this is a very important component of our pedagogy. Uh, in the spring, everyone engages on field trips and, and field work that is happening uh, wherever we go. Basically, the studios are, uh, this is, for instance, a, a, a field trip that CLC and I did with our students to 
to Iceland, and, and that was amazing. We could basically far, firsthand understand what is the effects of climate crisis on the glaciers, and what is the way, for instance, that in Iceland, the, the, the sea is not rising uh, because the weight of the glaciers is disappearing, and therefore the land is, is emerging. And we could work with scientists uh, from the Arctic Circle, circle and, and that was a very intense experience. And every year, all the students are doing this, and this is also funded by the school. So everyone, we have a, an endowment, the Kinney Endowment, that provides the students the possibility to travel uh, with funding from the school. I want to also underscore the, the computation and representation sequences that are probably leading representation and the use of computation in the in the world. This is a work developed by Laura Kurgan, who's the, the director of the of computation at GSAP. And, and you will see also the sequence, the technology sequence by directed by Lola Benalon, the director of the of the material lab that I already mentioned. But that is is it that has an amazing pool of of courses that I would encourage you to take a look at that are really impressive, I would say. And we're very seriously taking uh, into account questions of climate, questions of environment, questions of interaction, questions of technology. Also, we have tools so that it's not only the discourse and the, but we support you to get all the tools that you need to do the work at the level that you want, computational software, but also theoretical, also in, in all sorts of ways. Um, and that's something that we, we really dedicate efforts to. So it's, it's, we are a graduate school with a, probably the highest level in discourse and design and activism in the way they intersect. But we also make sure that everyone's equipped and given the opportunity to to uh, to acquire the the tools that that they need. And that's this is work. I mean, we could go on and on with I mean, this is from representation to prototyping to to the scanning to you know. Uh, we go back to the library because definitely we we are into also theory and books for those that are interested in number of every year number of graduates from the AD program uh, successfully are admitted in Ivy League PhD programs and I think this is very important because also but everyone not only those ones you know if you are uh, trying to develop a, a, a relevant innovative practice also you will benefit from the intellectual uh, a pedigree of the school, which has, I mean, the the some of the most important thinkers of the of the last decades are, are definitely here, and and we produce books all the time. Columbia Books, it's doing this all the time. And we discuss books, and we have the libraries open uh, that is presented books uh, at the lunch time with lunch every almost every week now, and in the middle of the of the staircase. So it's a very lively thing that we do, and we organize events around books and with books and reading and research. Uh, the AD program has the, uh, a unique uh, uh, possibility of once you graduate to uh, to apply for uh, TACs in the summer associate positions to co-teach or to be teaching assistants uh, of the studios. And this is a unique opportunity. There's 10 positions at least that are offered through open call and there's other positions across the year. And all this to basically make sure that you can, each of you can nurture your career for those that are interested in having a, both a design and teaching profile. We, we make sure that you, you're equipped for that and you, you get prepared for that. Those that want to be researchers or material researchers or innovators, we really make sure that you take the right courses for that. Those that want to do ex, uh, innovative and let's say uh, leading edge forms and, and groundbreaking forms of design, uh, to the conceptualization, the, the, the use of form, the, the use of technology, the material ideas, the societal components, the, whatever in each case is something different, we make sure that you have the right track uh, to succeed on that. Um, we also care for, for, for students as citizens, which is crucial for us. And we, have, we offer the possibility for students to open uh, student groups, uh, and, and that's something that the school funds. So if you get together with a few of your peers and you want to open a new uh, student association, we, we pay, they definitely uh, will support you. And we have a large pool of, of them also uh, that you can join easily. And we have the Ray ADO, for instance, that is very successful uh, and that every year uh, produces new episodes. It's really fun. And with the support of professional 
technicians and and it's it's a great i mean i i encourage you to take a look it's very lively it's totally still and run it's it's amazing and we're in new york and we are new york i think this is very important whatever we do we use new york as our home as our ecosystem as our you know like faculty are new york uh students are new york uh what we do is in new york and new york is for us the world because it's totally it's a city that is probably the city with best connected to everything that happens in the world. We have the most multicultural neighborhoods in the world and the, the, and the, and the presence also of the most important architectural offices, NGOs, intergovernmental ally, uh, associations and, and, and agencies um, and from the United Nations to, I mean, you, you name them. Uh, so being New York, I would say, not it's not for us, it's not being in New York, it's being New York, being a component, your faculty, you'd see there important people in New York and we we facilitate that those that come without a, a, a U.S. citizenship uh, can stay here for a period of three years to STEM uh, and that's crucial for those that would like and 70 percent of uh, international students graduating from the AAD stay in New York at least for a period of two years because of course New York is uh, an amazing professional and activist uh, uh, ecosystem where the most radical practices in all different directions can be found and the opportunities for jobs in them is of course very, very uh, appealing to, to many of the people who apply here. So we're here in Avery Hall at this point, both uh, 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 CSE and I to, to respond to your questions and, to, and we will be here uh, through the time of the application cycle and when you enroll and come here, we will be with you, working with you. Every every day or every weekday, hopefully, and uh, and um, and and that is something that we we do with huge enthusiasm because for us it's the AD. It's it's really the place where architecture can be now changed, innovated, taken to the next step, and and its future can be anticipated. So uh, I'm happy. I don't know, if you have things to add that I'm missing, and otherwise we can also have it. But but probably you have things you want to say. Um, so, um, if you guys have seen, there's such a rich, let's say, terrain of work, um, for the program. And I mean, I think that's the, the most exciting part. And also I want to underscore that, um, there's an amazing cohort that you'll be a part of, um, every year, the class, you, um, that is formed basically, um, including the instructors, the students, um, you basically form relationships that would last pretty much um, your lifetime in the people that you would work with, that you will be, um, you know, you might want to start uh, projects or firms with. And all, all the while, while you're sort of expanding your notion of what architecture can do, and you're creating really, um, let's say, work that can only be situated in such a place and such a cauldron of ideas. And you're, you're going to be able to add continuously to this um, ecosystem and in relationship to all the incredible alumni that we have in the past. Um, in this way, um, that's why we're also interested in you know, meeting everyone and speaking to everyone because in essence, it's always a living sort of ecosystem. And of course, you'll be um, here in New York and really every sorts of sort of constitutional sort of constituted body or institution is here. So and there are people basically doing the most interesting work and um, that are happening. You know, they're sort of creating the world that doesn't exist already, but we want to see. And I think that's crucial, right? Um, and also there is such a rich um, environment for transdisciplinary um, work and also action. Um, and you can see how all the different ways that we're thinking about academia or design or activism, they're really, um, being shaped and worked upon and constantly sort of growing from from basically what you will contribute to and you will be um, in allyship with. So that's what I like to add. <laughs>